church say amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, brother, for leading us this morning amen. in the presence of God yes, and leading us in such a spirited way. Amen. God is good. Yes. Amen. Amen. God has been good to us. Amen. Amen. And I, I enjoy talking about God. Amen. I enjoy talking about my God. Uh -huh. And I particularly enjoy this lesson series that we are in. Talking about who God is. Uh -huh. uh, because there are some who claim to speak for God. Well, well. But when they begin to speak, uh -huh. I can't say I always recognize the God that they are talking about. Come on, preacher, come on. So hopefully this helps us to get to understand our God better and then share our God more effectively with individuals who do not know him as well. Amen. God is a healer. Yes, sir. Right. Yahweh Rapha. God is righteous, uh -huh. Yahweh, Sikhanu. And this morning, as we look at Genesis chapter 22, verse number 13, the Bible says, Abraham, he lifted up his eyes. He looked, and behold, behind him, he saw a ram yeah. that was caught in the thicket uh -huh. by its horns. You yeah. all have probably heard about a uh, ram in the bush. Uh -huh. And so God had commanded Abraham to go and offer sacrifice. Yeah. In particular, his son. Uh -huh. Offer his son as the sacrifice. Uh -huh. this, this commandment confused Abraham. Uh -huh. What kind of God wants me to sacrifice my baby? Come on, but he's trying to operate by faith. Uh -huh. He's trying to follow God and his command Man. even though he might not understand. Have right, right. you ever been there before? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm just going to follow God. I don't understand what you're asking for, mm -hmm. but I'm going to just follow this thing through. Amen. And so God then has provided for Abraham a ram in the bush. Yeah. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Man. And then Abraham, the Bible says, called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And here's doctrinal point number one for us this morning is that God is a provider. Amen. God is a provider. Yes, sir. And hopefully we could take from uh, this, from our, our, our scripture reading, even this morning, our responsive reading is that not only is God a provider, but God expects for us to be providers also. Amen. Amen. God provides for you, but God is providing for you so that you can also in turn provide for someone else. Man. Did, you, did you get that? Do you understand that? Yes. Well, God is, is a provider. If, if we were looking at this in the Hebrew, Yahweh Yireh, the Lord provides. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Yireh is what, is what Abraham said at that time. Yahweh Yireh. The Lord provides and it also means Yahweh will see to it. Yes, Amen. Take that and let that bless you in your life. That God will provide. God has provided for you. God will continue to provide for you. I like the way he phrases that. God will see to it. Amen. Amen. So whatever it is that we encounter in life, we should know that God will see to the provision for everything uh, that we need. Amen. 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 Now, God provides, but God provides everything that we 
need. And every mother and father in the building ought to say amen right amen. there. Amen. amen. Because I might not have gotten everything that you wanted me to get. Amen. Right. Me providing for you does not mean I give you everything you want. But me providing for you does mean that if you look back over your life, yeah. you always had what you needed. Amen. Amen. You've always been fed. Yeah. Uh, you've always been clothed. Yeah. You've always had somewhere to lay your head. And, and that's the epitome yeah. of God, our provider, right. is that God has always provided yes. exactly what we needed. Yes. And, and it's the perfect picture of a provider. It's the perfect picture of a father. It's the perfect picture of someone that secures us. In uh, Genesis chapter 22, verse 9, thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, yeah. if you will still abide in this land, uh -huh. then I will build you up. Yeah. God is even saying that to us today. If you just stand still, if you just sit there and wait, one thing yeah. he said to the children of Israel is, as you stand still, behold and see that I am God. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. But, but just look. Keep your eyes focused on him. And God says, if you just stand here, stay where I put you. Stay in the place in this land that I put you in. If you stay here, I will build you up. Amen. If you stay here, I'll build you up and not pull you down. On, I will plant you yeah. and I will not pull you up. Okay. And for I repent me of the evil that I have done unto you. Now God says, while you wait, be not afraid of the king of Babylon, yeah. of whom you are afraid. God is able to provide for us and to calm our fears. Yeah. He says, but don't be afraid of him, said the Lord. Come on, come on. For I am with, with you yeah. to save you. How yes. many of you know that God has given the greatest provision for you? That is salvation. Yes. God has provided a way for you to be saved. Amen. For I am with you to save you. Yeah. And God has provided us deliverance. I am yes. with you to deliver you from his hand. God is a provider. Amen. Genesis chapter 22, it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Uh -huh. We don't like that, do we? Come on, fix, fix. We don't like that phrasing when it comes to God. Come on now. But the Bible tells us clearly, God did tempt, tempt yeah. Abraham. Uh -huh. And he said unto him, Abraham, and I love Abraham's response. Abraham said, Hanani, yes, yeah, I, I am here. Yeah. He just answered present. How many of us can say that? That every time yeah, God yeah. calls you, you just answer present. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah, able yeah. to answer and say, I'm here, God. Yeah. You're able to say, he am I, send me. Yeah. Amen. Most of us don't do that. Come we on. say, what about him? Here, send him. Yeah, we say, what about her? She can do it, can't you? But, but no, God calls Abraham and Abraham answers, Hanani. Yeah. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. I know you love him. Get you into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I shall tell thee of. Abraham rose up early in the morning. He saddled his ass, took two of his young men with him, and he took Isaac, his son, clave the wood for the burnt offering, and he rose up and went unto the place of which God has told him. And doctrinal point number two is God provides a test. Yes, sir. Yes, God is a provider, but God, God will also give you a test. Amen. God will provide an opportunity for you to, to be tested. And if you're like the students I teach, we don't like tests. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you ever want to get a group of people grumbling, you say, now on Friday, all of the students know, on Friday, you're going to have a test. My students like that. People say, why you always give a test on Friday? Man, I don't care when I got On Thursday, you're going to have a test. We can make it any day of the week. I don't care. I mean, 
I don't care what day you want to take the test. The test is still going to be the test is still going to be the test, and, and the test is still going to be the same, man. And the answers to the test is still going to be be there for you to 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 complete. So we should look at this this way that although God provides a test. A test is an opportunity to show what you know. Man. Amen. This is why most of us are scary when it comes to tests because we don't know what we know. Amen. A test then is also an opportunity for you to show what you have learned. And God is in the business of testing what you know. And, and God is in the business of testing what you've learned. And some of us are just like these hard-headed, stiff-necked, rebellious children of God. The reason we keep walking around, you know, you know something, the children of Israel had to go from one place to the other. You know how long the Bible says it should have took them to make it to the promised land? 11 days. They should have made it to their place of destination 11 days. And it took them 40 years to get somewhere that God could have got them in in 11 days. And that's the way we are. God says, okay, we're going to walk. I'm going to let you walk around in a circle until you figure it out, until you get it together, until you pass the test. And we should know this, that God provides a test because a test is an opportunity for us to demonstrate our faith. James chapter 1. James says in verse 2, my brethren, be happy. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. You should be happy that God is testing you. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. God is trying to teach us how to how to be patient, Man. knowing that the trying of your faith yeah. worketh patience. Uh -huh. But let patience have her perfect, perfect work, yes, sir. so that you might be perfect. perfect. Yeah, that you might be entire. Come on now, that you might be complete. Yeah, that you might not want for anything. Man. God is trying to put you in a position where. I'm going to provide for you uh -huh. to the extent that you won't have a want or you won't have a desire. Right. Uh, is there anybody here this morning that can say, I don't want for nothing? <laughs> right, God. You tell it on yourself. Right. You ain't got to say nothing. Is there anybody here that can say, I don't want for nothing? There's one little lonely voice in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> the only people responding, they both live in the same house. They both live in the same house. Amen. Now, what does that say about the rest of you? Well, your faith ain't right. That means God is still working on you. Yeah. God is still working in your life. Yeah. You still fell in the test. God is still proving you. God is still getting you ready. Yeah. God is saying, I'm trying to get you to the point to where, you know, I, I told somebody a couple of weeks ago, I have a friend of mine uh, I, I, I went and preached with him a couple of weeks ago. I told his church the thing that I like about him is when he calls me, every time he calls me, he says, I don't want nothing. I don't need nothing. I'm just calling you. I mean, he taught me something. He taught me, you know what? We Because when you talk to us, we say, well, I'm all right right now. But you know what I really need is? <laughs> yes, sir. you get to the point where you can look at your life and say, you know what? I don't need nothing. I got everything I need. And so since I got everything that I need, I don't want nothing. Because God, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, has given me everything I need. 
Well, the Bible is trying to show us this, that God is trying to get us to this point. Genesis chapter 22. Then on the third day, after they've been traveling to Mount Moriah for three days, Abraham lifted up his eyes. He saw the place afar off. I'm, I'm, I'm now, I can see the place where God is leading me to sacrifice my son. Abraham said to his young men, you stay here with the donkey and me and this boy is going to go over yonder and worship. Yeah. And then we're going to come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went, both of them, together. Abraham let his faith lead him. Verse 7 says, Isaac looked, spake to his father and said, My father? His answer is the same uh, this is interesting. Abraham's response to his son was the same response that he had to his father. Amen. Yeah. My father, uh -huh. Hanani, mm -hmm. here I am, son. Yeah. Go back and read this story. This is a beautiful story of how, of how a man interacts with his God mm -hmm. and how a God interacts with this man. And how this man interacts with his son. My father. Hanani. I'm here. Son. He said. This is for those of us that got smart little children. I see the fire. I see the wood. Yeah. But where is. Where is the sacrifice. Amen. That's for those of us who've been children that used to ask too many questions. Amen. <laughs> Your mom used to tell you, shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> Amen. Don't miss this. You know something else I like about this? This man's son knew what a sacrifice was. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Don't miss this, church. Yeah. <laughs> this man's son knew how this sacrifice thing was supposed to go. Yeah. This man's son knew how worship was supposed to go. Yes, yes sir. This man's son, he didn't, he, so that tells us what? He didn't go to worship by himself and leave his son. Come on, somebody. Amen. He didn't go to offer sacrifice by himself and leave his son at. No, no, no. His son was a part of this thing before, and this boy knew how we are supposed to be worshiping and offering and sacrificing to God. Amen. So, 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 my God, my, my father, I, I see the fire, I see the wood. Where is the lamb for the offering? And then Abraham says to him, My son, God will provide help for himself Come on now. a lamb yeah. for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And doctrinal point number three is when God provides for you, he's actually providing for himself. That's, that's for those of us that's always praying. God, do you hear me? God, do you see me? God, I need. Uh, God, I want. God is in the business of providing for his children. Amen. 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 God is not like us. He, he ain't a deadbeat dad. Amen. 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 God is in the business of providing for his children. Now, when I'm providing for my children, I'm actually providing for myself. That's the reason you don't mind doing stuff for your children, do you? Amen. Somebody can come and ask you for one thing, and uh, you might struggle to do it. But when your child is asking, come on. when you're giving to your child, the reason it's so easy to do it, because giving to my children is just like giving to myself. Amen. Amen challenge you this morning to be able to give to others that are not attached to you, to people who are not your family. You see, because really, really, 
If you, you, you can look about, well, I did it for this one, I did it for that one. I said, but the only thing, when you're doing it for them, you're just doing it for yourself. The Amen. Amen. And it's interesting, the language that, that Abraham uses is that, listen, son, we are going to offer sacrifice to God. God, God knows the sacrifice he wants. So it is our job, it is our duty to provide, to offer sacrifice unto God. But it's God's job to provide the sacrifice that he wants. Amen. When God provides for himself, when God provides for you, he's providing for himself. Uh, this is what we see in the language in Job chapter 1. The Lord come, uh, Satan comes to the Lord and God asks him, where are you coming from? Uh, he says, I've been going to and fro in the earth, walking up and down it. The Lord said unto Satan, watch this, hast thou considered my, my servant Job? Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes we look at that and we can really say, my Lord, what a shame. Uh, Job had to endure so much. Well, God put him on the line. Mm -hmm. Why was God able to put him on the line? Yeah, he might be your father, but he's my servant. Amen. He might be, that might be your mother, but she is my servant. That might be your child, but they belong to me, to God. So, 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 so God here is showing, you know what, whatever I do to him, I'm doing it to me. All right. Luke chapter 11, Luke the, the, uh, Jesus asked a question in verse number 11. If your son asks you for bread, any one of you, if your son asks you for, for, uh, uh, for bread, will you give him a stone? No. If he asks you for fish, will you give him a serpent? No. If he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? No. If you then, Jesus says, be it evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, yeah. how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask of him? What is he saying? Uh, if you will give to your children, don't you think God will give to his? Yeah. Do you think you can provide for your children, for your family better than God can provide for his? Yeah, God is in the business of providing. And God is in the business of providing for, for himself. Uh, that's the thing that, that Moses does when Moses appeals to him. Moses says, God, uh, you need to, you need to, God, God wasn't going wasn't to let these children go into the promised land. God, Moses said, God, you need to let these children go in. Because if you don't let them go in, then people are going to start to talk about Moses is saying, God, they're your children, so your children are a reflection of God help us. That's a lesson I want to preach to everybody in the world today. Amen. Since I work with people, children every day, and they say, I'm going to tell my mama, please, oh, please tell your please, please tell your mama what I said. Because I want to meet the one. Amen. I already know she got to be wild and crazy dealing with you. But I want to see. But because, 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 if she's not, you are a poor reflection of your mother and your father if they taught you better and you don't do what you've been taught. Amen. Moses is saying, God, these children are a reflection of you. And if you don't take them in, everybody watching is going to say, you didn't do it because you couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God says, okay, okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. I'm going to let them go in, but not these ones. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. I can still, I can still, I can still be God. I can still do it, but I don't have to do it for them. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 5, husbands, love your wives, Man. even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Man. Christ loved the church, yes. he gave himself for it. Yes. Christ loved you, Man. so he gave himself for you. Yeah. Why did he do it? The Bible says that he might sanctify it. Yes. He wanted to set you apart. God looked at you and said, you're special. Yes. God looked at you and said, you are worth 
baby. Amen. God looked at you and said, you are worth the redemptive process. So he sanctified you and he cleaned you up with the washing of water by the word. Why did he do this? Come on, preach. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I, I see. He said, yeah, yeah. He did it to you, and he did it for you, but he did it for himself. That he might present it to himself. himself. Yeah. A glorious church. Yeah. He said, I, I dressed you up mm -hmm. because you are attached to me. Amen. And if you're going to be attached to me, when people see you, they've got to see something that looks like it's attached to me. Amen. 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 Every mother say amen. amen. That's the way you. That's the reason why you 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 cut that baby hair. You 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 plait that baby hair. You dress that baby. Amen. You put that you put that little Vaseline stuff on their face. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Say, my baby ain't gonna look wreck, my baby gonna be shining. Hey, hey. <laughs> With that effervescent glow on them, hey, yeah. man. She's the same. I'm doing, I'm doing the same thing. I want you shining. Yeah, I want you looking good. Yeah. I want everybody to know you belong to me. Right. When God is blessing you, he's blessing you, he's providing for you. Yes. And at the time that he's providing for you, he's really providing for yeah, himself. himself. Man. Genesis 22 and 9, they came to a place which God had told them Abraham built the altar. He laid the wood in order, bound Isaac his son, and laid him upon the altar wood. Abraham stretched forth his hand. He took the knife to slay his son. The angel of the Lord called out unto, he unto him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Yeah, man. Nani. I'm here. Yeah. And, and doctrinal point number four, when God provides, he shows up. He shows up. Amen. Amen. When God provides, he shows up. Yes, he does. And, 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 and I know everybody can't say it, but if God ever showed up for you, say amen. 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 If God ever been there for you when you really needed him, amen. say something about that. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God has been doing a whole lot yes. for a whole lot of people for a long time. Oh. And the ones that he's done the most for are the ones that's the most quiet. But oh. you're the ones that oh. need to be the loudest, letting everybody know. Every time I needed him, yes, he showed up. Yes. Amen. Every time. Amen. You don't have to say nothing, but I'll stand here and tell you, every time, yeah. every time I, I call on the Lord, he heard my yeah. cry. Yes, yes, he answered yeah. my prayer. Yes, he yes. showed up and yes. he showed out. Yes. And he showed up and he showed out in ways I couldn't even imagine. Oh, yes. Amen. God has a way yeah. of showing up yes, sir. and providing mm -hmm. for himself. Yeah. And I'm somewhere in the area Amen. when he started to provide. Yes, sir. So some kind of way, I get this thing that we call a blessing yes, from yes, sir. the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. When God provides, He shows up. Yahweh Yireh. Yes. It also not only does it mean that God provided, not only does it mean that that God is going, but it also means that God will be seen. Yes, sir. And that God will will appear. Yeah. And thank God that He has a way of appearing. And he shows up at the right time. Yes, sir. I like this, that, that God showed up before you did something yeah. crazy. Amen. Yeah. 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 Come, somebody come on in here now. Yes, sir. I know you, we like to call on him after. Come on. Talk. Amen. Talk. After we done the crazy stuff. Amen. Yes, sir. We like to call on him after the handcuffs are on God. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we like to call yeah. on him uh, <laughs> <laughs> when we're sitting in the jail cell, amen. We like to call upon him when we hear the sirens coming. God help us now. Yeah. But how many of you know you can call him and he will show up before you go yeah. too far? Amen. Most of the time he shows up for us before we yeah. get to 
that place and we just Amen. disregard. Amen. 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 I want to encourage somebody that when God shows up, God shows up with wisdom. Yes, sir. When God shows up, he shows up with power. Amen. When God shows up, he shows up with knowledge. Yes, sir. When God shows up, he shows up to give you understanding. Amen. When God shows up, he shows up to give you foresight. Yes, and he shows up to give you insight. Yes, and so I love this, that yes. God shows up yes. before, yes. before you do what you're going to do. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Abraham lifted up his eyes. How I many of you know? Only thing you got to do is open your eyes. Yeah. I promise you, if you open your eyes, you will see God has been there all the time. All the time. Amen. If you yeah. open your eyes, you'll see God's been trying to help you all the time. Yes. If you yeah. open your eyes, you'll see God's been trying to bless you all the yeah. time. And if Amen. you open your eyes, you'll see God helped you by not giving you that foolishness you was asking yes, for. Amen. Amen. He lifted up his eyes. Yeah. He looked. Uh -huh. And then he saw the provision of God. Yeah. God showed up. Uh -huh. and, I, and Abraham is just walking by faith. Uh, the Hebrew writer says this about this faith walk in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, yeah. Abraham, when he was tested, yes, sir. he offered up Isaac. Uh -huh. And he that received the promises Come on. offered up his only begotten son. Uh -huh. Now, Abraham, God has already said to him, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to multiply you. But now, now the one that I'm going to bless you through, I want you to take him and offer him as a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And Abraham is looking, I can't understand this thing. How are you going to bless me and how I'm going to have children that are innumerable, but you want me to sacrifice him? Mm -hmm. But he says, well, you know what? He received the promise and he offered him up anyway. Amen. How many of you know you don't have to understand what God is doing in order for you to do what he tells you to do? Amen. Amen. All right. So then he said, now this is the Isaac of which you said, your seed shall be called. But you know what Abraham did? Verse 19 said, he had the count yeah. that even if I sacrificed him, yeah. God is able yeah. even to yeah. raise him up from the dead. Yeah. How many of you know that, that, that God can work even when we think it's all over? God can, can step into a situation even when the doctors are saying there ain't nothing else you can do. God can show up even when we think we've reached a point of no return. So from whence also he received him in a figure. So what should we do? What, what, what should we do? Our application. Expect provision. Yahweh Yire. God will provide. God will always provide. Amen. God will always take care of his children. Amen. God will always take care of his own. Yes. God will always provide. You don't have to like what he provides. Amen. You, you know how that is, all your parents, don't you? I mean, if y'all don't type it, I, you know, I have children in my house. They say, I don't like that. I don't like oatmeal. I don't eat that. <laughs> I don't, well, that's just, that should be fine. I don't care what you don't like. <laughs> just because you don't like it and just guess what, guess what's for dinner tonight. Hey, Amen. Well, I won't eat nothing. That should be just fine with me. <laughs> my stomach don't grumble because you ain't eating. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You think you hurt my feelings because you ain't eating? Today. How many of you know though? If you get hungry enough, you will really eat. Yeah, that's all you. I don't eat. If see, the only thing you're telling me is you ain't hungry yet. Because if you get hungry enough, you will eat what you said you don't eat. Amen. Now I'm just a man. I'm just a man. But your feelings don't move me. I'm just a man. You think your feelings move God? No, no, no. Talk to me, people. No. Do you think your feelings move yes. God? No, sir. No. You think God care about how you feel? Yeah. No. I have been looking in my Bible now. I have seen nowhere in my Bible uh -huh. where it says, and the Lord God of heaven care about your feelings. Uh -huh. I didn't have it ain't there. It's not there. I'm gonna go look again tonight. I might be, able to, but as long as I've been looking and I've been reading this thing for 40 years, and in 40 years I've never seen anything there about God care about how I feel about the heaven 
the hell and the, and the earth that he created. No, Amen. Amen. Ah. Not in that bridge. What he's done is he has provided. Yes. yes. According to his mercy. Amen. He's provided according to his will. Yeah. yeah. You are standing in his good graces. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And we should thank God yeah. thank for being a provider. Yes, sir. You know, when you got a good father, you yeah. are. The Bible's trying to teach us something. But the Bible tells us to honor your father, father and yeah. honor your mother. mother. What yeah. is he trying to show us? You need to get in the habit of honoring people who have provided for you. Amen. 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 Now, I don't want to hear about, oh, but you don't understand, preacher. My daddy was this and my daddy was that. I don't care that this is what I tell people about my daddy. I don't care what my daddy done. I'm here. Amen. 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 Now you feel about him however you want to feel about Amen. him. I'm here. Amen. Amen. And I don't trade that for nothing or nobody. Amen. Honor your mother yeah. and your father. And if he never gave you anything, he gave you life. life. Amen. But you don't know about my mom. If she never, I know one thing about the woman. She carried you yeah. for nine months yeah. and pushed you out. Yeah. You are here. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 And everything that happens since then, God has provided. Amen. And if you, if, if, if nothing else, you can praise God Amen. for Him yes, providing. For you Amen. all this time. Amen. Amen. The only reason we struggle with that is because it's selfish. Well, Amen. come on. Talk, talk, talk. Amen. Just we, we, I don't care. You can be 60 years old. Uh -huh. We whine just like we did when yeah. we were five. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We Amen. complain. Yeah. Oh, I need and I want and more and today and plus. Amen. So what? Forget about all that. Yes, sir. Thank God. Yes, sir. Praise God. Yeah. Always providing for you. Amen. He's promised us this. I'm going to always be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He says, I'm going to always be with you. Never leave you. I'll never leave you. No, for I will never, never. never forsake you. No, sir. He says, I'm going to walk this thing with you yes, all the way to the end. Of, I'm with yes, God. I'm with you from the cradle yes. to the grave. Yes, and if I make my bed in hey, yes, 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 amen, man, you better watch that. Come on, wrong. You Rick find Tom. yourself in hell. You go into the hell that He provided. Yes, yes, sir. amen. Great job, he provided heaven. Great job. He provided hell. Amen. So God, God as a provider, we should expect it, worship Him, and praise Him. Amen. amen. And we found times in our lives where we just haven't, haven't acknowledged God and all that he's done for us. Yes. We can't. Thank you. We turn from wrong right. and turn to righteousness. We yes. need the opportunity to come. So we together stand and sing a song of encouragement. Softly.